Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God praise all over this place. Welcome to One Word Fellowship Worship Center. Amen. Amen. Bible study. Facebook Live edition. Amen. We're glad to see you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Those who are watching by way of YouTube, we want to welcome you too as well. Amen. We're here in the great city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Amen. I'm Pastor John S. Bay the second. Amen. See you, Pastor, here at One Word Fellowship Worship Center. Amen. And we are glad to have you in our Bible study. Like we're glad to have you in the building. Whether you're live or whether you're Facebook live, we are glad to see you. Come on, let's celebrate them. Amen. Even as they're coming on with us tonight. So we thank God for you all. What a blessing, amen, it is to be in the building. Amen. Good evening, Sister Nicole Pulley, Elder Tanya Gray. Amen. We're praying for you. Glad you're here with us tonight. Amen. Brother Sean Hawkins, God bless you. So we're glad to see all of you. Amen. Those of you there, amen, just wave your hand back at your boy. Amen. Those of you, those of you who are there. Amen. God bless you. We're glad to have you in the building. Amen. I'm excited about the Lord. I'm excited about the things of God. Amen. We start. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Sister Millie. Good evening, Sister Millie Slaughter. Amen. We started a new series last week entitled Heart Stuff. Heart Stuff. Amen. Very intriguing uh, series that the Lord has got us on. Uh, we went from this means war, and the Lord kind of kind of broke off into the heart stuff. Um, there is something we have to realize that before we can even fight spiritually, yes. we've got to have our heart right. We've got to have our heart conditioned. Amen. We've got to be right before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited about the things of God. I'm excited about what God is doing even in each and every one of your lives. Yes. I'm grateful, amen, that you're here tonight with us. Amen. Do your boy a favor. Hit your share button. Amen. It's not just a share button to your page. It is a lifeline that somebody may need a word from the Lord. Amen. And we're excited about that tonight. Amen. Amen. How many love God in this place? Amen. Yes. Yeah, just give it praise. Just give it glory. If you really love it, I'm really love it. I'm, I'm just overly excited yeah. about, about what I see God doing um, by way of One Word Fellowship Worship Center, what I see Him doing in the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. We're going to keep each other lifted up in prayer because we know that God is up to something great. Amen. I love the people that are in this church. One Word Fellowship Worship Center. Amen. Where one word can change your life. Yes. Amen. I love what I see God doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to draw your attention tonight. Amen. Just before we pray, I want to get you uh, where we're going. Um, I want to draw your attention to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. That's where we're going to be at tonight. I'm going to read at the ninth and 10th verse. That's where we're going to start at tonight. Romans 12, verses 9 and 10. And I believe first day, I believe we have the reading also in the, the, the NIV. You've got NLT? NIV. NIV, yeah. I love it. NIV. I think that would help a lot when it comes to this. It's going to assist the word. Help, help us break it down a little deeper. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Uh, I love when we can, we can break the word of God down in a, in a little deeper form. It, it opens up things. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Dear God, we ask that you would open up the heavens tonight. First of all, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. For all things. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being Lord of our life. Yes. And we cannot do anything without you. And we ask even right now, God, that you open up the heavens tonight. Send flow from on high, dear God. Touch Hallelujah. us from the crown of our head down to the soles of our feet, dear God. Lord, let our heart be conditioned by and with your word. Yes. For the entrance of thy word, it bringeth light, God. Let revelation flow to each and every individual, whether present by building or whether by viewing and watching and worshiping. Yes. By way of Facebook or YouTube, spread your oil out there, God. Let the pureness of who you are yes. flow into our life, dear God. Lord, make an exit, make make a make an eviction even right now for the things, dear God, that you disapprove of. And ask right now, God, that you discover us 
and just let, let your spirit, God, flood into this house even right now. And we say thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We love you. We give you praise and we do honor you in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, touch me even right now, your men servant. That your word may come through this vessel. Now hide me behind your cross. Speak to me to God. I humble myself even in thy sight. Touch each and every person. I enter upon the sound of my voice. Dear God, that your word may be clear to us. And I'll give you thanks even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Let's take a look, amen, at Romans, the 12th chapter. Nine and ten. Amen. You have that in the first lady? Amen. Amen. Hey, how's it going? God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another yes. with brotherly love yes. in honor preferring one another yes. amen hit me in the NIV if you don't mind and I'm going to share some things with this here mm -hmm. love love must be sincere love must be sincere hate what is evil hate what is evil cling to what is good cling to what is good do that one more time love must be sincere love must be sincere let's put that out there love must be sincere keep going hate what is evil hate what is evil oh wow we live in a country where we almost have that backwards amen amen keep going Cling to what is good. Cling to that which is good. Let's break this ninth verse down a little bit because there's a word that sticks out called dissimulation. <clears throat> that word dissimulation, it is a rough word. The Greek word for that is simply, simply means anupokritos, which simply means, it means concealment. It is a concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, and true character. Mm -hmm. So the Bible tells us to love, and these are some of the words it broke down. It says we should love without pretense, mm -hmm. without deceit, without hiding, yes. without bluffing, yes. without guile, without dishonesty, without being counterfeit. Yes. So if you so, so when we love without dissimulation, we're loving honestly. But otherwise, we're, we're masking, we're concealing, yes. we're misrepresenting, we're, fault, we're, we're in falsification, yes. we're double dealing, lying, hypocrisy, uh, hiding, and the last word was faking. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So when we're full of dissimulation, and the Bible says to love without dissimulation, we're not to have this kind of love. We're not to have the fake love, the bluffing kind of love, the deceitful kind of love. Yes. Because what you're doing is hiding your true character. Lord, have mercy. You got the message Bible? Hit me the message Bible on verse number nine. Don't just pretend to love others. Hold up. Don't just pretend to love. If you pretend to love, what does that make you? Mm. A liar. A faker. Keep going. Really love them. Really love them. Yeah. Hate Don't, what is wrong. Hate what is wrong. When, when you really love, listen, when you really love, yeah. you hate what is wrong. We're going to be dealing with a topic tonight. Let's fix the heart. Mm, come on. Let's fix the heart. There's some things that we got in it. Yeah. It just is. So much that we can be deceitful. Sometimes we can be with pretense. We can be full of God. We can misrepresent. We can be false. We can be we can be lying. We can be double dealing. And when you're double dealing, you're also double tongued. Yes. We say things that are not true. We're full of dishonesty. We're full of hypo hypocrisy. That's why sometimes people call us hypocrites in church. Oh my God. That means that means we say we represent one thing. 
And then, and then yet we put out another product. Yes. That would be crazy to go to the Pepsi Come Cola on. Company. Come on. And then when they open the doors of the truck, a Coke comes off of there. Yes. Because, or a Sprite come off because, because Pepsi don't make Coke. And they don't make Sprite. That's right. You know, you might get a Sierra Mist. You might get a Mountain Dew. You might get a Dr. Pepper. But, <clears throat> but, you, but you should not get a Coke. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Gatorade, too. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you will get. Praise Hallelujah. God. Okay. So, so let love be without dissimulation. Uh -huh. Abhor that which is evil. Hate that which is evil. Abhor means to hate. Yes. We got to hate it. Gotta and unless we really, really love, I mean really love, I mean, yes. <sighs> sometimes love is testing. Yes, it is. Sometimes it's testing. Sometimes it's hard. Because you're human, yeah. and you live in these bodies, and you have emotions, yeah. and you have feelings. You know, there's an old saying that says, they said, don't wear all, they said, don't wear your feelings on your sleeves. They said, because you might just get it knocked off. Mm. Ah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, old folks, and I, and I, it, it took me getting my feelings hurt, it took me, uh, going through a few little things to really un understand what, what they really meant by not wearing my feelings on my feet. They said, man, they, look, they said, your heart got to be bigger than that, son. Yeah, come on, come on. Say, they said, your heart got to be bigger than that. Say, so, say, so if your heart get broken that easy, then, then your heart's small. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. <laughs> Tell somebody, fix the heart. Let's fix the heart. Let's, let's fix the heart. the heart. Okay. So there's love without dissimulation. That, that means we got to be true to one another. Yes. Don't fake love me. Because cause, 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 cause one thing about it, as much as I can feel real love, Come I can on. also feel fake love too. Yes. You know? I'm going to tell you who's the perfect example of knowing whether you have a real heart or not. Yes. Kids. Yes, yes. Kids will tell me, I, I never forget my mom, my mom, the aunties and all them. They, they, they said, it's a man, it's a, it's a man. They said, they must have a messed up heart. They said, every time they let them hold that baby, that, that baby break down and start crying. Mm. <laughs> Hello? You know why? Because babies have a, have a pure spirit about them. Yes. They haven't, they haven't started learning a whole bunch of wrong because they hadn't quite learned men yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't know no wrong to you, the man. Yes. Mm. Right? Amen. You know what it was to get high. You know what it was to lie. Even though you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, you know, you had a part of you that was that was already uh, trained to love sin. Yes. But you also had a part of you that was trained to love God. Yes. Because as much as I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, I was also made the very likeness of his own image. It almost seems like a disparity between the two, yet intertwined into one. Yes. Amen. 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 Because because I am because I am spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what you feed your soul, God, I feel like teaching tonight. Come what on. you feed your soulish part, it becomes you. Yes. So if you feed your heart good stuff and you learn how to love, some of us have, have had to learn how to love because all we've ever taught was hate. Yes, yeah. All we've ever taught, all, all we ever taught was how to get over. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all the examples that we had until we really genuinely learn how to love. Until you listen, watch this. Until you really genuinely learn how to love, you'll never really learn how to genuinely forgive. My God. Mm, my mm, God. Mm, mm, mm. Help me with my screen right here, um, Majana, baby. The stone went out right here. Help me out a little bit. Just get it back for me. All right, because I'm going to get off this verse right here. So we also learn, listen, to let love without dissimulation, avoid that which is evil, and cleave to that which is good. Yes. Cleave means we got to hold on to it. What does it say in the message Bible right there? Hold. Mm hmm Hold tightly to what is good. Hold yes. tightly. Hold tightly. Don't let it go. Be, be, be like a bulldog. You know, like, I, I see some pit bulls. They, they say they got, what, 800,000, what, 800, what, 1,200 pound uh, grip with, with the jaws. They, 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 when they, once they grip, grab a hold of something, they don't let it go. We should be real pit bullish. If I can say that in the spirit. We should be real pit bullish in, when it comes to being in the spirit. Yeah. When it comes to grabbing a, grabbing a hold or gravitating to the things of God. My God. Amen. And if we have his love in us, mm -hmm. then 
we can start to decipher or or um, uh, discern uh -huh. things properly. Yes. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, we end up going through different, all these little different tragedies in our life, and all we had to do was fix our heart. My God. Mm. Oh God Almighty. Okay, let's 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 do this here. Look at verse um verse number number ten. So now it's a little over that dissimulation. Look at verse number ten. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Hit me the NIV real quick if you don't mind. You have that already? Amen. Mm -hmm. Same place we were. Verse number 10. Mm -hmm. Be uh -huh. devoted to one another in love. Oh, be devoted to one another. Oh, okay. be devoted to one another. Don't, don't be afraid to, to give yourself. When you devote yourself, you ain't afraid to give yourself to them in love. Amen. You know, it is, it is, it does not make you lesser. Let's please listen to me. It does not make you lesser if you're the one showing more love than the other. My it does God. not. Amen. It does not take away from you. Amen. It means you're being who you are. Yes. Hey, good God. And that, and that, and that means you're you're allowing God at 100 percentile to operate through you, whether yes. you're getting 100 percentile back or not. At least you did your part. Yes. Oh, I wish we knew how important that was. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I wish we knew how important that was for us to do our part. See, because it's just like a marriage. A, a, a marriage is, is, um, is covenant. Yes. The, the ring simply means covenant. It's a circle. Yes. Circle of covenant. Yes. Meaning a binding agreement between yes. one between between one or, or, the, or the two parties. Yes. We're married to each other. Yes. And that also means I can't be married to anybody else. And so anytime anything else wants to get in, I can't let it in. And she can't either because we have a binding agreement yes. that we're married, we're covenant yes. with each other. Amen. Are you with me here? So when you devote yourself to one another and you do, and you're kind, kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and in honor preferring one another. See, when, when we get our love like this, when we start fixing our heart, we start loving them that hate us. Yes. Praying for them that despitefully use yes. us. It is so important that we walk in God's love. Is, is that it for that? Honor one another above yourselves. That word, one word right there, honor. Mm -hmm. When you honor something, you give it reverence. Yes. Listen, of course we ain't putting people higher than God, but we honor one another. That is also another word for respecting yes. each other. You know, Hallelujah. and we can respect each other yes. even when we don't agree. Yes. We got Come that. On. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Good God. We, we, we may not always be on the same playing field, but I respect you. There's, there's a whole lot of things I may not always agree with, but I'm going to respect the pride. Listen, this world is so full of disrespect. Yeah. The last place we should have it is in the house of God, God. or between brothers and sisters. Yes. We've got to kindly and affectionately and devotedly love one another. Jesus. We have got to. Us, we have got to. Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, fix my heart. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord gracious. I know it's a little tight here tonight. It is. It just is. I got my toes curled up in this table because you know what? Because, because sometimes we, we got moments and we don't feel like it. Yes. Hello. We have moments that we just do not feel like it. My God. But guess what? Love ain't based off feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's based off your heart. Yeah. Because feelings are lied to you. Yeah. Your heart will tell you the truth. Yes, it will. Good grace life. I promise you, your heart will watch this. Your heart will tell you the truth even if you're doing evil. Yeah. Your heart will even tell you the truth even if it's evil. Yes. It'll, it'll be evil to the truth. Yes. It'll be righteous to the truth. My God. Because you're only going to do what's in your heart. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Okay. Y'all still with me? Good. Let's go, let's go to Proverbs. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't believe? Okay. Yeah. You do go to um, Acts 5 and 3. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things you can do from the heart that can really, really be hurtful to you. Yeah. Spiritually. And you got to be careful. Romans 8, 5. Because the heart can lie too. The heart 
can be truthful even if it's a lie. Especially when the devil feels it. Let's say five and three. Five and three. Romans five and three. Wow, watch this. Check this out, y'all. <laughs> he said, but Peter said to Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? You see this right here? He said, why? He said, why has Satan filled thine heart? Watch this. Why? Did Satan fill him and his wife's heart? Ananias is probably, I'm sure you know the story about them when they came in and told Peter, uh, yeah, we sold the price, we sold the house for so much, so much of the price, but, we, but they know that, that he died, and then she came in, and she, not long behind him, she told the same thing, she told the same lie her husband told, and then she died. Watch this. But this is what he said, this was the point I'm going to make right here. Peter asked Ananias, he said, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie? To the Holy Ghost. Mm. Watch this. Lie. Hold on. Satan filled the heart. And then the person lied to God. You see that? My God. Read that for me. And I think. Watch this. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? Stop right there. Read the message Bible. Watch this. Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Stop right there. It's all alone. If Satan filled the heart to lie, it had to be open mm -hmm. for him to feel. Right now the Bible says to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. How is it that Satan filled the heart? So that Satan can fill our heart. And then we have activity that follows. The activity that followed Ananias and Sapphira was they lied. Mm -hmm. Which also means, and there was a price involved, which now means also they stole. My God. So now they're liars and thieves. Mm -hmm. They are full of, they're dishonest. And they're also crooks. Yes. So if Satan fills your heart, he turns you in to something God hates. My God. My God. So much that it brought this thing death. Jesus. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Let's fix the heart. Let's fix the heart. Let's fix the heart, y'all. All right. And, and, and I, so, something I want us as, as believers to do, I want us to start I want us to stop lying to God from our heart. That's it, Jesus. I want us to stop lying to God from our heart. My God. These are some red flag scriptures to me. I ain't gonna lie. These are some red flag. I mean straight up red flag scriptures to me. So these are some to me this one, this is almost like old testament stuff where people fell dead. You know? Some do's and don'ts. This right here, this right here is something that happened in the Old Testament when they lied to God or did some dumb stuff. God opened the earth and swallowed folk up. This right here's one, this one when Old Testament moves that happened right here. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We have to be careful that, that an Old Testament move don't have to happen to us because we don't let the devil fill our heart with some Jesus, stuff. Jesus. We have to be careful as believers. Because as much as God loves us, He there also is some things that God hates. Yes. All right? Amen. Okay. Um, Proverbs 14, 34. Proverbs 14 and 34. Amen. Everybody get something out of this tonight. Amen. Good. Amen. Let's fix the heart. Let's fix the heart. Amen. Now we know what. We know we know what Ananias and Sapphira did. So, so Satan feels our heart. Satan, Satan feels our heart. So, so we live a life of sin. Yes. Right? So let's take a look here. 1434 of Proverbs. He says, righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Let's deal with that for a second. I researched the word reproach. It simply is the expression of disapproval or disappointment. Uh -huh. 
Reproach is the expression of disapproval or, dis or disappointment. And it also brings on disobedience and it gives birth to serious consequences. Amen. All right. Read that in the uh, NIV for me, please. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteous, watch this. Righteousness will exalt a nation. Righteousness will exalt a nation. That comes from the heart. Yes. Both, these, both these come from the heart. Righteousness will exalt a nation. And what else? But sin condemns any people. Sin will condemn people. You ever seen the house that had condemned on it? That means nothing can live there. That's right. So whenever you live in sin, you live in condemned. Mm. That sibling you put up the side, God does not live there. Yes. Read the message Bible for me. Godliness makes a nation great. Hold up. Godliness Woo. makes a nation great. That's yes. why they respected Israel the way they did yes. back then. Yes. Because Israel had a fear of God. They respected God. Even the United States at one point in time had a fear. We respected God. We reverenced God. We just let any and everything go in this country. Yes. But sin brings condemnation. It brings a reproach. We finish reading that message Bible. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Sin is a disgrace to any people. Watch this right here. Reproach has to be rebuked, reprimanded, Corrected and or annihilated. Yes. Do you not remember whenever Israel went into bondage? Babylon, mm -hmm. 70 years. Mm -hmm. See, remember come that? On. Come on. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Assyrians. Yes. I know 70 plus years. Yes. Y'all remember when they were in Egypt? Yes. 400 years. Yes. I, 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 can, I can keep going. I can keep uh, talking about the times when they were in bondage. Well, sin brings bondage. Yes. Right? Amen. So reproach has to be rebuked, reprimanded, corrected, and or annihilated. I, I'm going I'm to I'm give you a good example. I'm going to give you a good example. Because it has to be corrected. <laughs> and it has to be, you know, annihilated. You know, and, and see, reproach has to be fixed. I'm going to give you a good example. When I was about five or six years old, I went to store with my mom. You know, and I thought I was going to cut up. And she didn't wait till we got home. She fixed my reproach right on the spot. Because we did say that reproach was dishonor or uh, disappointment, you know, or disapproval. Well, she disapproved of my actions. You know, and I disappointed her from a whole lot of people. That was a reproach. Well, she fixed my reproach right on the spot. Jesus. She wasn't worried about folk calling 911. She wasn't worried about DSS. You know, like they are now, like how children go to school. Them little whips on, they were, I went to school with. Mm mm. No. Children, how children could take call the police on you? No. They tell you, you couldn't call the police. Matter of fact, pack a bag. Tell them to take it with you. Reproach has to get fixed. If I lied, if I picked up bubblegum, if I done something dumb, guess what? If I cut the monkey at school, I, I tell him, look, I said, I said, go ahead and fix my room. Look, I know this, I know, I know scripture back there, you know, I know what the word repro was. I said, I said, you want to get a panel or you want to call your daddy? I was, I was bent right on over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you call my daddy, I, I already knew what it was. I already knew what it was. I knew he was going to fix my repro worse than you. Yeah. So I need him, I told what I need them to do is go ahead and, and go ahead and tally up, you know, how many licks I was going to have to take. Because I knew the school couldn't give me as many licks as I could get at home. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And the reason why all this chaos, all this shooting and everything else going on is because there ain't nobody to fix some of this reproach in the whole world. I wish I had an amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some of these pe people who are kidnapping people, if you fix the reproach, you fix the kidnapper. Yeah. You fix the bank robber if you fix the reproach. Yes. Amen. Amen. You better catch it while it's small. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Woo, y'all quiet. I must be in the right place. I must be in the right place. See, you must understand something. Reproach is a sin of the heart. Reproach is a sin of the heart. 
Reproach brings on disobedience. Matter of fact, it's simply, disobedience is simply, simply an act. Uh-huh. It's obedience, disobedience is simply an act of the heart. It's a disobedience is an act that comes from reproach, that which is in the heart. My God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalms 51. David said about the heart. Here's the secret. Let's look at some things right here. Mm -hmm. David wanted his heart fixed because he had done some things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to be willing for God to fix your heart. Yeah. You know, when you know you've done some things. And, and a lot of us won't be honest. Mm -hmm. But here David was being honest. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Good gracious of life. Y'all about to mess me up on these messages here. I'm not going to mess with y'all tonight. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Look what David said. Look what, Donald, look what David said in Psalm 51. He said, have mercy upon me, O God. He says, according to thy loving kindness, according to, thy, uh, to, uh, uh, to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out all of my transgressions. Blot out all my transgressions. I've done this stuff from the heart. But then he says this. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Where does iniquity come from? It comes from the heart. Iniquity are hidden sins yeah. in the very depths of the heart. Sins from within. If you look, if you research iniquity, you'll find out they are hidden within. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because because sin will make you hide stuff. Sin will always put you into hiding. Why do you think Adam went into hiding? Like he could hide from God. And God, God said, Adam, where are you? He said, he said, I knew I was naked, so I hid from you. Yeah. <laughs> Sin will always have you hiding. Yeah. Good God, I feel my hip in this building. Yeah. Sin will make you try to hide, even though you're just out front, just as naked in front of any and everybody. My God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Folks try to hide from their pastors, hide from their leaders. I promise you they do. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out all of my transgressions. I don't want to see my sin no more. I don't want to see this no more, God. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Give me the NIV, please. Have mercy on me, O God, mm -hmm. according to your unfailing love. Now, David knew God's love did not fail. Mm -hmm. He knew God's love wasn't failing. Yes. But David's love had failed on God. Mm -hmm. Because anytime, you, anytime you're sinning, something about your love has failed. Keep going. According to your great compassion, mm -hmm. blot out my transgressions. God is the only one who can blot out your sins. Yes. He's the only one. Keep going. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. David said, you're the only one who can clean me up. Yes. I need to be cleaned up. Watch this. David is confessing before God. And oftentimes, we don't think we're unclean. So we never confess. We won't always come honest before God. This is an honest text. Yeah. This is an honest text. Yeah. Where David is telling on himself. Before God. Well, David has also been exposed already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even had the prophet. Prophet David could come to him and tell him all about himself. So now David's heart is so pricked. Yeah. And he is so convicted. That he said, okay God, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes God has to expose us. Yeah. To get us to come clean with ourselves. Yeah. And you don't come clean with yourself until you really say, God, yeah, that's me. Create me clean heart. Now let's, let's go all the way down to verse number um verse number three. He said, For I acknowledge my transgression. He said, I acknowledge it. I see everything I've done, God. He said, and my sin is ever before me. Watch this. Don't be afraid to admit it. I was somebody right there in your own nose. Please don't be afraid to admit it. God can't fix what you won't admit. God can never fix what you won't admit. God, I've got a problem in this area. God, i got some issues in this area. 
And oftentimes people have carried things for weeks and months and years, all because we won't come clean with it. Amen? Amen. He says, against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when, ju when thou judgest. In other words, whenever you tell me something's wrong with God, I'm going to admit it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You've exposed it to me. You're right about it. Give me the message Bible, please. Three and four. Wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Mm, wash my guilt from me. Get this guilt out of my life, God. Yes. Because I'm going to tell you something. Guilt is something if you walk around with that threat of condemnation. When you walk around with guilt, you're unclean. Keep going. For I am conscious of my rebellion. I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of what everything I've done. Keep going. And my sin is always before me. My sin is looking me right in my face. Keep, keep going. Against you, you alone, uh -huh. I have sinned. Keep going. And done this evil in your sight. Wow. Keep going. So you are right when you pass sentence. You, whatever, whatever way you judge me. Oh, my. Whatever, whatever penalty you levy against me. Uh -huh. You're right. You're right. In other words, I'm, I'm going to be accepting of it. Yes. Because, because I want to be clean through the matter. I want to get this off of me. Yes. I, I, I want it to be over with. I want this to be over with. I want yes. my conscience clean. Yes. Because when you, carry, when you carry guilt around, that means your conscience is not clean. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I need to get this off my heart. I need to get this off my chest. Yes. I need to have this conversation. Woo. Even if it means an argument, at least I got it out. Yes. And it's over with. I can lay down at night and I ain't, and I ain't got to be waking up night shaking and chills but because, because I got stuff going on inside my heart. I need to get this off of me. Yeah. Let's have this just conversation so I can be free again. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there are some people who are not walking around free because they still have all this stuff festered and pondered up in their heart. Look at the word ponder, pond. You know, you know, what's a, you know, you know what happens in a pond? All the water stops. Mm -hmm. All the water stops. The nice flow that you should have in your spirit is pondered up. Woo. Because you've pondered it and you've left it there. You've kept it. You've held on to it. That's good. And ponds sometimes are swampy in places. And one thing about a pond, it stinks. Mm -hmm. It's not like flowing water. Swamp stinks. It's dirty. And, and no, I'm going to tell you something. No matter how the pretty the fish come out of there, a swamp stinks. Yes, Amen? Amen. It stinks. And if you, if you take it, you get swamped up long enough. I don't care how much you dance, how much you shout, how much you smile, how pretty you dress. Sooner or later, that which is stinky, everybody starts to smell it. Yes. Don't believe me? Take and fix some fish in your house and have some leftovers and throw it in the trash can. Seal the trash can the best that you can. And you walk in and leave the house and walk in it. And, and, and be in an atmosphere where it's nice and clear. But then walk in the house. You're like, hold up. Oh, whoa, hold up. Hold up. It's stinking here. Yeah. You know why? Because you still have the residue of that smell in the tongue. Well, something's got to go. We got to get this out of the house. Yeah. We got to get this out of the house because this stinks. Yeah. And sometimes if you, you, you must realize, well, I got some stuff in my house. This got to go. This stinks. I'm smelling some stuff. I, hold on. And, and, and watch this. And by the time, watch this. I've always told my mama always told me, it says, son, if you stink to the by the time you smell yourself, everybody. Everybody else done smelled you. <laughs> they said, son, if you stink, every time, they said, by the time you smell yourself, everybody else done smelled you. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if you smell yourself, oh, God, ain't no telling who else done smelled your oh, stuff. My. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel happy. Praise the Lord. Okay, so look what David said. David said in verse number seven, he asked God to do this. Now, since, he, since he's acknowledging all the issues that he's got in his heart, then he's acknowledging all the issues, the struggle, the pain. He said, God, this gets you. I've done it. He said, I've done it. I've done these sins. I've got all this iniquity. I've got all this chaos inside me. I want you to have mercy on me. He said, but I want you to do something. Verse number seven, he says, purge me yeah. with his son. Purge. Clean me out. Somebody shot clean me.
me out. Yeah, if I got some stuff in me that's not like you, clean me out. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Then he said that he says, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen? Amen? Let's get down to verse number 10, where he says, create in me a clean heart. Because you can't create in me a clean heart if you ain't purged me, and if you haven't washed me. The blessing, the blessing of really, really being clean is that you purge me, yes. and you wash me, yes. and then create. And, and one thing they did, they came and they sent in a demolition, a, a, a demolition crew, yeah. demolition crew. I thought you you doing some stuff on, on, a, on a probably a while back. They, they brought in a demolition crew mm -hmm. and they tore down all the old stuff. Yeah. And then they, then they sent in a cleanup crew to get everything they had torn down out of the place. Uh -huh. And then they started bringing in all the new stuff. Yeah. But see, what the Holy Spirit would do first he will come in and start tearing down stuff yes. that he does not like. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we say God purge me, we yes. say God tear it all down. Yes. Tear this whole thing out. Wipe this out. Wipe my ideas out. Yes. Wipe my motives out. Yes. Wipe the way I think out. Wipe the, way, wipe the way I feel about people yes. out. Get this garbage out of me. I've got some hatred. I've got some unforgiveness. I've got some issues. I've got some, I've got some mouth issues. Oh, I can say some things to you. God, get my mouth clean. Do some stuff to me before you bring in this new stuff. Yes. <sighs> clean me out. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I have watched demolition. I've seen the nails sticking up. I've seen the wires. So if the house could talk, mm. Lord God, I'm trying not to go this way. If the house could talk, they would, the house will tell you that demolition hurts. Yes, it does. Demolition hurts because you're taking out all the stuff that's been here for years. Yes. Mm, 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 mm. Isn't it something how the Holy Spirit has got to get us to unlearn yes. all this old stuff that I already know? That I'm comfortable with. I was fine with those. I was fine with these toilet walls. I've had these toilet walls with me forever. Yes. I was comfortable with all these old pictures on the wall. I was comfortable with the old, with the old stove that you that almost blew the house up. I was comfortable with that. I was comfortable with the door that squeaked. And I was comfortable with, 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 with the light fixture that flickered on off, even though I could burn down the whole house. Yeah. I was comfortable with that. My God. Isn't that something that we're comfortable in something that can kill us? But I heard, I heard 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 say this. It said, but if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. The Holy Spirit, the demolition crew that came in, took out all the old stuff. Mm -hmm. And now all things have become new. Yes. My wife is doing some stuff like that right now at the house. She's taking out some old stuff. And getting ready for some new stuff. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh, I was so tired the other way taking some old stuff out. She don't want it there no more. She said, nah, we need some new stuff. So this has been here since we lived here. And I had to agree. I had to concur. Now, even though taking the old stuff out didn't just, I, I, it didn't just hurt her, it hurt me. It didn't just hurt the house, it hurt me. Because I had to take out the old stuff with some muscles. You know, made me a little sore. Okay, let's keep going in the scriptures. Amen. Create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. The message Bible, can you read that for me? I'm going to stop with God. God, create a clean heart for me. Mm -hmm. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. And renew a steadfast spirit. Something to keep steadfast. Mm -hmm. I can stay on track. Steadfast, something steady. Yes. Steadfast. Something I, I ain't got to move. It has good foundation. Steadfast. Yes. Keep going. Do not banish me from your presence. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave from your presence. 
Keep going. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. That's right there. That's what I want. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. The only way I can really fix my heart mm -hmm. is to have your Holy Spirit inside me. Yes. Because, because my heart is only going to mirror my spirit. Yes. My heart is going to mirror my spirit. Yes. And the only way I can keep from the damages is to have your spirit within me. Because that's going to protect me against the damages. Yes. Even when I want to do crazy stuff, it's going to protect me. Yes. Yes. All right? Glory to God. And, and according to Psalms 119 and 11, David said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart. That I might not sin. Yeah. So now if I have your word in my heart. What I put. Watch this. What I put in the heart. Now has the potential. Yes. To protect me. From any further damages. Yes. From sin. Read Psalms 119. And, I left for and, then, and then message Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Psalms 119. Verse number 11. Let's create. Mm -hmm. Yes. Psalms 119 and 11. NIV. Psalms 119 and 11. Mm -hmm. I have hidden your word in my heart. Yes. That I might not sin against you. That I might not sin. If I had your word, I just might not sin. I just might not sin. Yeah. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He did not sin. Read the message Bible for me. I have hidden your word in my heart. Mm -hmm. So that I may not sin against you. I have hidden your word in my heart. So I may not sin against you. Let's go to Ezekiel 18, 31, 32. Ezekiel 18. 31 and 32. I'm going to show you what you, have, what you got to do with sins. I'm going to show you what you got to do with it. 31 says, cast away from you all transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed. Transgress means to cross the line or to break the law. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. You see that? Why will you die, O house of Israel? Huh? Because sin will kill you. You see that? He said, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Give me the NIV, please. Check this out. Read yourselves. Of all the offenses. Rid means to get rid of. Uh huh. Rid, rid yourself of the offenses. Things that will offend God and you. Watch this. The same thing that will offend God should offend you. Mm -hmm. The thing that offends God should offend you. Amen. If it doesn't, watch this. If it offends God and doesn't offend you, your heart's wrong. Mm -hmm. Your heart is off. If it offends God and doesn't offend you, your heart is off. Yeah. Keep reading. Read yourselves of all offenses mm -hmm. you have committed. Wow. And get a new heart. And get a new heart. And a new spirit. Get a new heart and a new spirit. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to come out of that place where, where you're committing those things, mm -hmm. you've got to get a new heart and you've got to get a new spirit. Keep reading. Why will you die? People of Israel. Why would you say, why will you die? Why will you stay in transgression? Why will you stay in sin and die? Mm. Why will you stay there and die when all you gotta do is get a new heart yeah. and new spirit? Mm. He said, why in the world would you even stay in that place? Mm -hmm. Give me that in the message Bible. I need the message Bible in 18, 31, 32. Put all your rebellion behind you. Hold up. Uh oh. Put all your rebellion behind you. See that? Mm -hmm. He says, put all your rebellion behind you. And do what? And find yourself a new heart and new spirit. Find, he's a hold up. Find yourself mm. a new heart and a new spirit. Jesus. 
Lord, it's quiet in here tonight, y'all. Right. Woo, Facebook, y'all better pray for your boy tonight. Mm, 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 mm. Come check this out. It's the stop. Don't miss up. It's got me in a smiling position. <laughs> hey, Amen. Maybe, maybe, maybe so I can keep laughing, keep laughing too. Read that again. Put all your rebellion behind you. Put all your rebellion behind you. Watch this right here. Some people are so comfortable in rebellion. Some people are so comfortable uh -huh. in rebellion that that's all they know. Mm. Rebellion is, is, is a heart issue. Yes. It's a heart issue. Jesus. It is so close. The Bible said that the spirit of rebellion is as of one who is engaged with witchcraft. Ooh. Amen. That's what, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that rebellion is as of the spirit of witchcraft. Yeah. So when you're actively rebelling and, hold on, and you're knowingly rebelling, the Bible says that you are engaging with the devil himself so much that they call it witchcraft. My God, my God. They have called it witchcraft. My God. Mm. Jesus. Okay. Read that again. Put all your rebellion behind you. Put that stuff behind you. And find yourself. Stop right there. If you put rebellion behind you, you put the devil behind you too. Mm -hmm. If you put rebellion behind you, you've also not put the devil behind you. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's a good note to write down. If you put rebellion behind you, mm -hmm. that you also put the devil behind you. Yeah, amen. Keep reading. And find yourselves a new heart. Find and yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Wow. Go to Jeremiah 32, 39 and 40. Jeremiah 32, 39 and 40. Mm -hmm. Watch this right here. This is why it's so important for us to, us to have a, a new heart and a really good heart that's after God. Because you might even be affecting your generations. Could be affecting your children, your grandchildren. This is why the heart has to be fixed. Look what it says. He says, and I will give them one heart and one way. And we do know that to follow God it is straight and narrow, yeah. right? He said, I'm going to give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. So not only do you affect you, but now you're also talking about affecting generations. Yeah. So whatever, succumb, whatever you succumb to in your heart, that now becomes the teachable measure or the example, good God, that you give your next generation. You're asking your kids to follow my example and to not only follow your example, but teach this to your children, even if it's evil. Who God Almighty. Somebody shout amen in here. Lord have mercy. What does the NIV say? Watch this. I will give them singleness of heart. I'm going to give you singleness of heart. means one heart. And action. And hold on. And action. That's it. I'm going to give you a single heart and action. Action. So action comes from the heart. It does. For out of it flows the issues oh, yeah. of life. Yes. Oh, Keep yeah. going. So that they will always fear me. So the action now, so, so the, the action now says so that they also will fear me. Keep going. And that all will then go well with them. Woo! So things can go well with them and with them. And for their children. And for your children. So things can go good for you and your house. Yeah, good it. God Almighty. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, visit my house, God. Visit my house. Hey, good Lord have mercy. I don't just need God. I just need God to fix yeah. my heart. If God can fix my heart, God can fix my whole house. God. Oh, Jesus. If That's God like can fix my heart, he can fix my house. Yes. Oh, Lord, somebody said fix my heart, God. Fix my heart. You don't just say, you say fix my heart. You say, God, fix my house. Yes. Fix my children. Fix my children's children. Yes. Because the same thing that I ask God to pattern in my heart, I'm going to ask God to be the pattern for my house yes. and my children's house, yes. my children's children's house. It all comes from the heart. What yes. will you teach your house? It's yes. got to come from your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like going in there. Okay, read up. Is that all for that? Is that all? 
Give me 39 to bless you, Baba. I, I promise this is going to bless you. Watch this. And I will give them one heart uh -huh. and one purpose. I'll give, I'll give you one heart and one purpose. To worship me forever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One heart, one purpose. Anybody ever seen Drumline before? Yes. I'm, I'm, living, I'm, living, I'm living to every black musician's movie. I, 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 just, I, just, I, just, I just believe it is. I just believe it is. Because, because they, they, they said, what, 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 the, what was the thing that said? One band. One band. One, one sound. One band. One sound. One, sound. one band. What? One sound. See, that is who we are supposed to be. And yeah, one band, one sound. And what he was really saying, I need you to be of one accord. accord. One accord. And that one accord comes from having one heart. One heart. Lord, help me to like Jesus. One heart. Read, read, read again. And I will give them one heart uh -huh. and one purpose. Stop right there. One purpose? Yes. The purpose. We listen. We get our purpose of a how we sound together. Yeah, that's it. Not by how well we sound mm. as individuals. Uh-huh. We get our purpose by how we sound together. That's it. It's just like soprano, alto, tenor. Yeah. If you sing the right note in soprano and the right note in alto and the right note in tenor, we make one beautiful sound. Yes. I'm not sure what the keys are. Is it, is it, is it C, G, E, something like that? Is that, is that a chord? Oh, is, it, is that a chord? What's the chord sound? C, D, E, uh, C, D, G. I'm sure, I'm sure there are some chords that, that make it. If you just put them all together, mm, yeah, they, they have a... <laughs> We've been made to blend, but we don't blend if we're not all on oh, one accord. We don't have one heart. That's it right there. My God. How, how can we really have church? Yeah. Yeah. If we're not on one oh, accord. My God. If we don't have one heart. Yeah. And if we're not in harmony. Yes. Come on. That's what makes our one. Sound. Yeah, Jesus. That's it. Deacons being deacons, trustees being trustees, yes. elders being elders, ministers yes. being ministers. I mean, yes. elders being elders, ministers being ministers, yes. pastors being pastors. Yes. Working the heck out of our legs. Yes. Oh, we make the church have a sound. Church sounds so good that the world can't help but hear God. Yes. Oh, I need to go one more place. Let's get out of your way. Right. Let's read verse number 40. Let's read verse number 40. So now, I, I want to really put a sticker on that, on that one place right there. Look at that. About even how your children should respect the Lord. So it's, it's not just for the good, but for the good of the children. Yeah. 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 Yeah that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. And I got a note here for you. God does not make covenant with those who do not love him. That's it. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Thank you for the amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Woo, somebody say, this is my heart, God. This is my heart. See, because I need covenant with God. Yeah. I need to be on one of covenant with you. And I need to be on, be on one accord. I need to be covenant with you and, 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 and one accord with you and, and covenant with God and one accord and, and one accord with God. I need both of these parts working. I need to, I need to have favor with God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Read that in the NIV for me. Then message we're done. Mm -hmm. It reads, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Mm. I will never stop doing good to them. Ooh, go back, go back, do it again. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Good God Almighty. I will never stop doing good to them. Hold on, God, well, he, he said, I won't even stop doing good to you. He said, I won't even stop doing good to you. Those that got come, he said, I won't stop doing good to you. Ooh, he said, they're going to look at you and know you, baby. Mm. <laughs> to 
tell somebody, folk gonna look at me and know I'm faithful. Folk gonna look at me and know I'm faithful. They gonna know that God's with me. Yes, Lord, help me. Help me somebody. Now, go ahead and read it again. And I will inspire them to fear me. Hold on. And I'm gonna inspire people to fear God because they saw you. Keep going. So that, that they will never turn away from me. Mm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Message Bible, please. Mm -hmm. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Mm -hmm. I will never stop doing good for them. Oh, my God. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me. Hold up. He's going to put the desire in our heart to worship. If we love God, he's how he put a desire in your heart yes. to worship. Yes. yes. And they will never leave me. Woo! And they'll never leave me. They'll be in, be in, be in fellowship with me. He watches. He even puts it in our heart to worship him. One more place. Proverbs 20 and 9. This is it. I promise you. Proverbs 20 verse number 9. And one thing you must understand about our heart. We cannot cleanse our own self. We cannot clean our own heart. Verse 9. 20 and 9. Proverbs 20 and 9. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Mm -hmm. Who can say that? This was Solomon talking. He said, who can say this? Nobody. Read that message Bible for me. Oh, eat out me first, please. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure. Mm. I am clean and without sin. Lord, have mercy. Who can say it? None of us have that right. Message Bible, please. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure. I am cleansed from my sin. Wow. None of us have a right to say that. He's the only one that can cleanse us. He's the only one that can work things out of us that needs to go. He's the only healer of unrighteousness. He's the only healer of transgression. Listen, we're talking about fixing our heart tonight. Whatever you need cleanse from, he's the cleanser. Whatever you need delivered from, he's the deliverer. Where if your heart is broken, he's the mender. And I don't know who all I'm talking to tonight, but these are heart scriptures. These are things that deal with our heart. Let's fix our heart. If we've recognized that, that we're somewhere in the text, and, and, that's, and I realize that's sometimes the biggest part that we deal with as believers is identify with the text. Identify with the text. Because sometimes I'm busy telling God that's not me. Come on now. And that becomes the hard place 